Uh, today we'll be talking about open census. A um, little bit more about me. I'm a dead trickster on GitHub and Twitter. I write Erlang and Elixir, and well, common list mainly occasionally too. So, open census, let's start with definition. It's a single distribution of libraries for metrics and distributed tracing with a minimum overhead uh, that allows you to export data to multiple backends. So, well, lots of things are going on here, and uh, we will start step by step. Um, let's start with distributed tracing. Um, it will help you to answer questions like what's going on, what happened, uh, how long, and, well, my favorite can be predicted. And, of course, uh, distributed tracing is a special kind of just tracing, uh, with, uh, which in turn is a specialized login, uh, which is low-level debugging tool, and the main part here is probably it's backed by up by uh, runtime operating system tools. So, say you have this natural breakdown by function call, or in Erlang you will have uh, traces uh, uh, for messages. Uh, but the main drawback uh, for our topic today is that it's local only. Uh, so, if you have a distributed system uh, where your computation spans across uh, microservices, you will have to invent something. So, this is how distributed system looks. Um, uh, yeah. Um, so how we jump from uh, tracing to distributed tracing? Well, um, we can associate trace ID with requests. Uh, we can uh, break down computation logically um, to spans, uh, essentially metadata, um, which uh, have relationship. And now instead of this nice uh, black box, uh, we have um, we can see internals, and just uh, from the quick glance, uh, we can see where the most time is spent. So in this case, it's C. And it's worth noting that uh, A, B, C, D, it's a purely metadata. So usually, uh, the exact meaning of uh, uh, you know properties depends on the tool that you use to visualize and to analyze. So, um, well, in open census, span uh, have um, has name, kind attributes, which is a map, uh, stack trace, that's optional, um, start and timestamps, and links. It has also many more uh, properties, but they, they are optional. So we also have uh, minimal uh, overhead mentioned uh, in the definition, and what's, what's up? Um, Usability, that's how it's easy um, and usable for you, for programmers, uh, for integrators. It should be easy to use. Uh, it should have minimal compile time overhead. And you should focus on spans, uh, not how propagate, how to store. Um, and of course, performance. Everyone loves to have as many spans <laughs> as needed. Um, so let's talk about easy to use. Um, well, as I said, say tracing. Uh, local tracing is usually backed up by runtime um, stuff or operating system. Uh, when you go to distributed uh, tracing world, you you may lose this support. Um, but uh, say in Erlang, we can use process dictionary uh, to carry your data. Uh, this helps uh, to clean up uh, interfaces. Um, we can do optimization with macroses or parse transforms. Uh, and this should be, you know, uh, easy and uh, uh, errors should be nice. <laughs> um, so yeah, OTP 21 is coming. What's nice here um, for us? Um, so we have sec trace uh, module which helps to trace messages, and in OTP 21 uh, we have uh, lifted uh, uh, token label limitation. We can now set the whole trace context as a label, uh, and this is nice. Uh, but uh, that's not enough uh, because uh, we don't uh, have uh, it back, the trace context, uh, where return trace, uh, so we can't compute duration. That's, uh, th uh, you can uh, find more on this topic um, on um, our Open Census Erlang repository. We have issue for that. Yeah, pretty cool discussion. And of course, uh, as discussed today, a standard logger. So 
spans, the naturally can be logged. Um, and the next question, when you think about it, is what library to use. And if you are Erlang guy, well, it's a probably the logger or your internal stuff. And Elixir, uh, well, that's logger from Elixir. But say you have a mic one microservice where you have both Erlang libraries and Elixir. And then what to use exactly? Well, we went with monkey patching Elixir logger. So it just calls a logger directly. <laughs> Yeah, um, so, and since we now have a um, pretty well-defined common interface, we can automate it even further, add our tracing metadata. That's, that's awesome. And uh, propagation and storage. So actually, OpenSensus propagation is based on the upcoming standard. Uh, it's called uh, distributed tracing, and it defines um, formats, how you pass uh, trace context, um, and how products uh, can, uh, you know, live together. So mainly it discusses HTTP headers, since, well, HTTP is everywhere. Now. Um, so, well, now you have uh, <laughs> too many spans because it was, it was nice and easy to use. So you can uh, have samplers. Uh, we have always probability sample uh, sampler, like one from, you know, a thousand. Uh, or you can turn it off completely with never sample, and you can write uh, your own, of course. So samplers they wo work on the whole trace level, and you can go to individual spans level with filters uh, that are coming soon. Um, if you are familiar with Otter or other uh, open tracing libraries for Erlang, they have similar stuff. Uh, you can um, basically uh, dispatch based on uh, span attributes. Yeah. So another uh, big thing in the definition is metrics. Uh, metrics helps you to answer questions like how many requests, messages rate, free space left, and yeah, again, predict when machine will run out of this space. And um, metrics can make life better. Uh, so before uh, you like kind of blind what's going on, why everyone is complaining, then you add just uh, simple uh, stuff, and you see it on the graphs uh, that error rate's increasing, and then you can go to spans um, and see where the most time is spent, where the error happens. Or even better, if you add predictions here, um, you can have alerts. So ahead of time, you know that uh, you will be screwed in the two hours here. <laughs> so um, we can have see like uh, three kinds of metrics. So recorded me uh, measures, that is direct instrumentation. The values uh, that you write, say, um, response size. External statistics, um, mainly operating system, and imported, like exometer, Folsom, etc. And to support this, uh, we have two API sets, uh, one for direct instrumentation, record function, <laughs> and data model for representing external imported statistics. And I have a uh, couple screenshots for you. That's uh, Phoenix and Grafana. Um, this is, uh, I think, FreeBSD. Well, well, just operating system stats. And then alert. Yeah, so here we have been warned that the system is under high load. <laughs> um, so yeah, but. Uh, Say you want to have uh, metrics for your HTTP server, um, and uh, you have HTTP request count. And then you want to distinguish uh, counters for uh, methods, get, post, um, put, whatever, um, for response uh, status. Or maybe even if you work with uh, Phoenix or tools like Phoenix, uh, you want to distinguish between controllers. So you want to associate metadata. Um, well, we have tags. Uh, some system, like Prometheus, call them labels. That's essentially key value pairs, and you just attach them to values. And you can see HTTP request duration seconds, and we have two tags here, method and status. So um, OpenSensus introduces new thing here is uh, tags propagation. So here on the image, we see a router um, that uh, the first thing that uh, meets a user's request. Um, it can create its own set of tags 
uh, which will be transferred to backend that controlled by you. It can be forked to auditing system and Hadoop, which is great because you it's a third party product uh, which can be integrated uh, with Open Census and it will be understanding your text too. So uh, that's uh, that's cool. So what's about minimal overhead here? Again, usability. Uh, it should be easy and this easy to integrate with other libraries. Uh, say you want to uh, instrument Ecto. Yeah, no problem. Um, and it should be easy to use uh, these integrations. Um, so, yeah. And of course, performance. Measures just can't be slow. That's, <laughs> that's the main point. So, and then uh, measures count shouldn't be a concern. And as we spend, now everything is nice and you have so many measures and you don't want to just count, you want to have a duration. Uh, we solve uh, first many measures with a subscription model and uh, we decouple all recording and aggregation. So you choose uh, aggregation type, or I. So one single measure can have many subscriptions with different names, uh, which will be expert as metric names, and um, aggregation types, counter, uh, sum, or latest, or distribution. And uh, really important point is uh, that a measure without subscriptions is a no op. So it's like empty shell. Uh, ideally, it shouldn't consume resources, well, it does, of course, it's the real world, but um, yeah, no dispatching is done. Plus, we have uh, this nice parse transform, and if uh, you record with a constant measure name, uh, atom string, uh, it generates a module name, uh, which backups uh, measures, and you not touching ETS for dispatching or whatever, it just uh, unrolls the loop, subscription loop, and it's nice. So this is uh, view anatomy. Uh, view has a name. It references a measure, um, aggregation type, uh, constant text. Yeah, we can have this. Uh, just text. Yeah, that's important thing. So when you measure, when you record the measure, uh, you as an instrumentation uh, author, you give a list of text, and your users that define uh, views, they can overwrite this. They can select only text they care about. And unit. So unit is kind of a new concept. And the end goal here is to automate units validation and conversion. Um, Open Census says that uh, we are using units of measure.org database, which is machine readable kind of database of units. Uh, but um, the main drawback here is that uh, it's the usability because uh, say everyone's happy with uh, kilobytes like written like KB, right? Uh, in units of measure world, this will be KBY. Uh, <laughs> so you will type KB and it will shout at you because that's not right. So we are kind of, um, you know, still thinking about it, uh, uh, usability implications. But um, still, uh, we implemented uh, time units conversion. So uh, think about um, uh, Phoenix uh, and its instrumentation. It gives you start and uh, timestamps in native units, and which is right. As Manuel says, uh, we have to aggregate uh, native time units, or we will lose precision. But this is meaningless for real world, so we have to export this. So you can define measure uh, with native time unit, and it will actually force uh, your users, uh, which define views, to override it. And uh, they will say microseconds. And Open Census uh, will automatically convert uh, native time units to microseconds. So one uh, thing that's not uh, mentioned in the definition is Z pages. It's an in-process and introspection web interface. Well. Uh, here you can see traces, metrics, you can tweak your configuration at runtime, and most exciting for me at least, uh, that's queries. Um, it's not uh, the specification uh, surrounding queries, not uh, really finished. Uh, it's uh, of course connected to a metrics uh, bullet, 
uh, but the idea is that you have some kind of window-based analytics. Um, yeah. So uh, again, I have a couple of screenshots here. That's um, traces screen from Golang client. Um, that uh, measures uh, list uh, from Java client. So yeah, we are going to have something like that. Of course, I hope it's nicely designed. Yeah. Um, so uh, another thing mentioned in the definition is that the open census is a single distribution of libraries. So of course, um, being a part of distributed system uh, world, um, it will be used by different team, uh, different languages. So it offers uh, same vocabulary. If you record, uh, you know, your measure in Java, the function uh, will be called the same record in the Erlang or Go or whatever. The same concepts. Uh, as I mentioned, standardized wire formats, and uh, we have like umbrella uh, GitHub organization. So libraries for different languages. There are official libraries. So this is what we have uh, now. C++, Erlang, Go, PHP, Python, Ruby. Um, we also have multiple backends. And backends, I mean uh, statistics, uh, um, like Prometheus, or integrated uh, stuff like Stackdriver, or just traces, uh, Zipkin. So in Erlang, uh, we support Prometheus, Stackdriver, and Zipkin. Um, Bombard is on the way, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, like uh, an example of interoperability, we have uh, two screenshots from Google op uh, uh, open source blog. The same trace displayed uh, in Stackdriver and AWS X ray. So, yeah, Open Census is uh, an all in one tool for distributed tracing and metrics, promoting some interesting concept. Yeah, I hope you liked it. And let's uh, finish with um, Beam ecosystem. So, first, links. Uh, open Census is the main uh, website. Uh, spec uh, leaves uh, here, Open Census Proto, in form of protobuf files. Uh, if you want to discuss uh, the generic design uh, of the Open Census, please join Gitter, Census Instrumentation Lobby. Uh, Erlang library lives uh, under Open Census. Erlang name, we have hex PM package called Open Census. Uh, we have community for integrations, not that many so far, but yeah, please contribute. Uh, we have Slack um, channel, Open Census, and shameless plug. If you use Grafana and Prometheus, uh, find dashboards here. Um, and uh, well, what's what we have now? Uh, Ellie, Cowboy, uh, PGO, that's a, a Postgres client. Uh, Plugs, uh, Phoenix, Ecto, they're coming soon, really soon. <laughs> and we integrated with Zipkin, Prometheus, and Stackdriver. Um, questions? Thank you.